Good morning. We are delighted that you have chosen to spend this morning with us. We are North Berwick Christian Fellowship and you can find out more about us on our website. Whether you live locally or further afield, we just want to welcome you and we're so delighted and thankful that you've chosen to connect and join with us this morning. Huge welcome to you. Thank you so much. My name is Jo and I'm going to be leading us through the online service here this morning. If you have any questions or if you just want to get in touch, connect, say hi, then please do leave a comment in the comments box if you're watching on YouTube or you can email and get in touch. But either way, we would love to hear from you. There's a few different ways to connect. If you are new to our services, then I wanna let you know a few different ways that you can connect in with us. YouTube at 11 a.m. every Sunday morning, our content goes out onto YouTube. And don't forget to subscribe so that you can be notified of future content. We also as a community meet at 10.30 a.m. on a Sunday morning on Zoom. And it's a great way of getting to know more people in the community as well as doing a bit of ministry and prayer and sharing together. So if you'd like to do that, then why don't you get in touch with us and we'd love to send you the Zoom link for that. We also have a few in-person services, which I'll share some details on later. It'd be great if you've been maybe been following us for a while and you want to start getting more involved, or even if you're new to the area or visiting, it'd be great to have you with us. And uh, there's more details of that coming up. We also have small groups that meet every week. Maybe you've been watching for a while and you'd like to engage a bit more in small groups. We would love for you to connect in. They meet weekly, um, once a week, just for a chance to connect and grow together. Now they're not gonna be meeting as frequently over the summer, but if you'd still like to connect in, then we'd love to hear from you and we can set that up for you. We also have our weekly email that we send out called Connect, which goes out every Saturday morning. And this has loads of information about the life of the church and all the happenings that are going on in the church. So if you'd like more information, please do get in touch and find a way of connecting in that suits you best. This morning, we're gonna have a few notices and then um, Keith, we have the amazing Keith joining us and he's gonna be starting our new series with us this morning. So we have a few in-person services coming up on the 25th of July and on the 22nd of August. Both are gonna be at 1.30 p.m. in St. Andrew Blackadder Church here in North Berwick. It's been amazing to use their building. Huge thanks to them. There is no pressure to attend. If you feel like actually this isn't something for you at the moment, then you can continue to watch online. Our services will be um, online still on YouTube at 11 o'clock and the message will be the same. So there's no need to attend the in-person service and watch the YouTube or fear of missing out that the message will be the same. There will be no Zoom calls though on these Sunday mornings. And as we mentioned last week, just want to uh, let you know that we have um, had the endorsement of the church for our new trustees, Neil Thompson, Norman Lazenby and Simon Rawson. You have all endorsed as our trustees and they join Peter and I on the team of trustees with Peter as our chair, which now forms a team of five. So thank you to everybody who endorsed um, our new trustee appointments. Um, we're really excited uh, for this new season. Thank you very much and thank you for your endorsement. We're gonna have a time of worship just now. And this is something that we love to do. We love to just to worship God and come together in his presence, to adore him, to worship him, to give him our all. Whether we're in person or in our living rooms, it really doesn't change. We still worship and we still engage and we still love his presence. So let's come to worship just now. We come to worship this morning, Lord. We still our hearts in your presence. We lift our eyes to you, God, and we give you thanks for your faithfulness to us, your great love for us. Psalm 18, verse one to two, says, I love you, Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my deliverer. My God is my rock in whom I take refuge, my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. Let's read that again. I love you, Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my deliverer. My God is my rock in whom I take refuge, my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. God, this is who we come to worship this morning. We worship you. Let's worship. the 
Lord And he is high upon the throne And his glory fills the heavens and the earth One like a lamb who was slain is on the throne So I cast my crown before you And bow down to pray For everything cries holy Everything cries holy Oh, everything cries holy to you, Lord. For everything cries holy. Everything cries holy. Oh, everything cries holy to you. We see the Lord, and he is high upon the throne, and his glory fills the heavens and the earth. One like a lamb, who was slain is on the throne. So I cast my crown before you and bow down to pray. For everything cries holy, everything cries holy, everything cries holy to you, Lord. For everything cries holy, everything cries holy, oh everything cries holy to you. is high upon the throne, and his glory fills the heavens and the earth. One like a lamb who was slain is on the throne. So I cast my crown before you and bow down to pray. For everything cries holy, everything cries holy, oh everything cries holy to you.
So this morning we are starting our new series with Keith and this summer we have a series called Life Changing and we have invited a number of different people to come and share a message on something which has impacted or changed their lives. This might be a verse, a scripture, um, a passage, something that has impacted them on their walk with God and it's going to be an exciting series hearing from lots of different people, their stories, their testimonies of what God has done in their lives. We're going to have some people that we know come and join us as well as some new guests over the summer. This morning we have Keith Short joining us again and Keith is a great friend of NBCF and of Neil and I. He's a man of, inc of incredible integrity, of honour, of gentleness and of wisdom. He was the senior leader at St John's. He's now stepped back from that role. He works for the Scottish Network, which is a network which supports and equips uh, the church leaders. And we uh, are part of that network as a church and we're just delighted to have the friendship and wisdom and support and leadership of Keith for us and as a church. And so we're delighted that he has joined us again this morning, albeit not in person. And we do look forward to that day when he can be with us in person. But today we have him opening our new series, Life Changing, and we just want to welcome Keith this morning. NBCF, it's so good to be able to talk to you this morning. Uh, I just wish that I could be there with you in person. In fact, I really look forward to the day when we can actually get together and have these in-person meetings and I can actually be there in lovely North Berwick with you. But hopefully, I don't think that day will be too far off, so I'm really looking forward to coming down to see you guys. This morning, Neil and Joe have asked me to speak on a verse that is significant to me. Now, I've chosen a verse that many of you will groan when I tell you what it is. It's a verse that is so familiar to us all that we think we know that there is all there is to know about it. Yet it's a verse that has been incredibly significant to me. It says, John 3, verse 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him would not perish, but have eternal life. Now forgive me if this does not look as if I'm showing any imagination, but honestly it is a significant verse for me, and continues to be so. It was a verse, first of all, that was preached upon when I became a Christian. But you know, there's so much more here. Probably because it's so familiar, I think that we can often miss some of the deep and timeless truths contained just in these few words. The first thing is, for God so loved. <laughs> in fact, <clears throat> I would have said that this is the most fundamental truth that we need to know and experience. God is love. 1 John 4 verse 6, it's boldly claim that God is love. It actually is who God is. Yet we so easily miss it. None of the creeds, none of the historic creeds mention it. It's in, it's in none of the doctrinal statements that I've read. Yet the time and time again, the Bible proclaims this truth, that God is love. God doesn't just love, God is love. It's one thing though to know that God is love as a fact or as a theological truth. But it's quite another for you to know it for yourself personally. You see, I can even believe that God loves you, <laughs> but I have so much greater difficulty in believing that God actually loves me. And I think the reason for this is that I know what I'm really like. You know, the bits that I try not to let you or others see. My thoughts, my lusts, my jealousies, the anger, the selfishness that's often in my heart. You see, I remember my failures. I remember those embarrassments. I remember those embarrassing times when I have said or done something which has left me deeply ashamed. The things that I wish I hadn't said or done. When I first said yes to Jesus, I remember so clearly the exhilaration, the wonderful sense of God's presence, the realisation that he was real, not just a figment of my imagination. As a young Christian, life seemed so easy. Prayers were answered. It all seemed 
very uncomplicated. C.S. Lewis describes the sensible but disillusioned man. And as I've got older, I've understood what he means by that statement. What he meant by that was someone that, when they first become a Christian, they're so excited, they set their sights so high, they've got so much faith, so much belief in what God's going to do, that they're invincible. And yet as they grow, and as they get older, and they suffer more and more disappointments, they, they suffer from more and more losses, they mess up more times, they gradually set their sights a little lower and become sensible but disillusioned men. Soon after becoming a Christian, I did something really bad. I'm not going to tell you what it was, but it hurt those that I loved the most. And I found it really hard to receive forgiveness from God and from others. And I even found it really hard to forgive myself. But it was partly the grace and forgiveness shown to me by others that enabled me eventually to come to a place where I could receive God's forgiveness. And having received that forgiveness, I began to experience afresh his love. It's true, you know, the scripture's right, that those who have been forgiven much, love much. I think the best illustration that I can have of love or of God's love it is that of becoming a parent and a grandparent. I know the feelings that I have for my children and grandchildren are so strong. I literally would excuse anything in them. I, 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 I love them so much. That doesn't mean to say I let them get away with things or I let them get away with things. That doesn't mean to say I challenge them. But it does mean to say that when, I, when they mess up and do stuff that's really bad, and they all do, especially teenagers, then... My love is not dented. I continue to love them. I continue to want the best of them. I, no matter what they do, I continue to be on their side. And if you want to have an example of, you say, well, that, that's a bit soppy, Keith, isn't it, it? God's surely more than that. No, he's not. Look at the story of the prodigal son. That's exactly what that story is about. It's about a father whose son wished he was dead, reaching out to him, longing for him, loving him loving him back into the family. God is love. For God so loved the world. The second thing that this verse speaks to me is that God's love is really inclusive. Jesus really did die for everyone. And he's really not willing that any should perish. Much of Western Christianity has been dominated by Augustinian thought that forensic salvation, a legal transaction, the total depravity of mankind and the Trinity is a hierarchy of authority. Yet many, if not most, of the early church fathers did not hold this view. They didn't see salvation so much as a legal transaction, but as an invitation. They recognised that before the fall of Genesis 3 came Genesis 1 and 2, where we read that man and woman were created in the image of God, and it was good. They didn't see the Trinity so much as a hierarchy, but more as a community of relationships, one even describing it as a dance. Jesus died for the whole world, not just for those who look and think like you and me. Every single person is of value and of immense worth to God. That's what my Bible teaches me. I, I love the story of the Moravian missionaries who sold themselves into slavery in order to reach the slaves on the plantations in the West Indies. As the ship sailed away from their home port, they cried out that Christ might receive the rewards of his suffering. God's love is real. God's love is inclusive. Jesus died for the whole world. For God so loved the world that he gave. He sacrificed himself. We worship a generous God who freely gives to all who ask. When I became a Christian, the charismatic movement was, I guess, in its infancy, well, this time around anyway, and it was really controversial back in the 1970s for many evangelicals, Catholics and traditionalists alike. And I remember 
wanting to be filled with the Holy Spirit, longing to receive the fullness of God, to know God so much deeper, longing to have spiritual gifts, all of them, well, all of them, that is, except for for the gift of tongues and martyrdom. A martyrdom you only get to use once, and I don't think I was ready for that. But the gift of tongues was really controversial. So I literally, I can remember praying to God, Lord, fill me with the Spirit. Give me your gifts. Give me everything, but not tongues. I remember one night, I was in the Navy at the time, and it was a Naval Christian Fellowship prayer meeting. And we were in this room. And as we were praying together, it was like the presence of Jesus filled the room. And the person who was actually a Methodist minister who was leading our time together said, I just sense God wants to fill people with his presence today. If you want to know more of God, if you want to know and go deeper with God, why don't you just raise your hand? Now, I thought I was the only one in the room that raised my hand, but I realised, but after I, afterwards I realised that everybody else had. I raised my hand and two friends came and prayed for me. And as they prayed for me, all I can describe is something that I learned that Wesley experienced. That was rivers of liquid love flowing from my head to my feet. It was an incredible sensation. It was a physical sensation. I can't even begin to describe it fully to you. And it had a dramatic effect on my life. It had an amazing effect. I knew that I'd be changed. I still didn't speak in tongues, but I knew that I'd been changed. So the three things that happened was that, that there was a sense of wonder as I experienced afresh the love of God. God's generosity in pouring out his experience refreshed that love of God. Secondly, my witness began to be effective. Literally for months uh, since I'd become a Christian, I'd always wanted to, to speak to others, for others to come to know the Jesus I knew, because it seemed so obvious to me having become a Christian. And yet, despite my best efforts, despite my abilities to, and my braveness in sharing my faith, absolutely no one came to faith. Some people had just ignored me. Others ridiculed me. Mind you, I can remember telling my sister-in-law that uh, if she didn't come to Jesus, she'd spend eternity in hell. So perhaps I didn't have the, 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 the best evangelistic technique. But hear this. Having been filled with the Spirit, I went from that place and within a week had led seven people to Christ. The Holy Spirit, God's gift, isn't just for us, it's for others. And the third thing that happened to me was a new, wonderful sense of worship. You see, up until this point, I had loved hearing the scripture being taught. And it had come alive to me because I'd never, before becoming a Christian, I'd never really read the Bible. And I'd only had it read to me in the AV version, and that was boring. And for me, though, when I became a Christian, Scripture came alive and it became real. And there were passages like 1 Corinthians 13, for, which were amazing. And then suddenly, when I got filled with the Holy Spirit, you see, for me up until that point, worship was a boring bit until we got to the sermon. But suddenly it changed. And far from being boring, I discovered that as we worshipped Jesus, we knew the presence of Jesus. And I couldn't get enough of it. And that's my prayer for you this morning. That you will be filled afresh with the fullness of God, the fullness of his Holy Spirit. That you will know God's love and be filled with power and boldness to witness for him, to give it away. Being drawn all the time deeper and deeper into God's presence. It's hard. And we easily, uh, we easily slip, as, uh, uh, as I think it was Lawrence Singlehurst, the, the ex-YOM director of England, who said, we, we will swerve to rot. But I want to finish with an illustration. It was an illustration I first heard from Chris Valter, um, uh, 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 of, of Reading in, in, in California. And I think it shows us that one of the reasons that many of us find it hard to receive God's love is because we don't really feel that we're of value. Chris Valentin tells the story of, of a famous artist who, who painted a picture. And, and as he painted the picture, if you, if you said about that, and somebody asked him, what do you think the picture was like? And, 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 and if you said of that picture, 
oh, I don't think it's very good, do you? What you're saying, in fact, is, actually, I don't think the artist is very good. I think the artist it, 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 it has, has made a mistake. Did you know that Scripture tells me in Ephesians 2 verse 10 that you're God's workmanship, or otherwise translated, you are God's masterpiece? When you do not value yourself, when you not do not accept who you are in Christ and who Christ has made you to be, you're in fact saying to God, you haven't made a very good job of me. You've made a mistake. And I do not believe for one moment that, that God is capable of making mistakes. You see, I believe that God is love. I believe that God's love is inclusive for everyone, and that includes you. And I believe that God so loved the world that he gave, that we worship a generous God who gives freely to all that ask. And I believe this morning that as you ask God for a fresh filling of his Holy Spirit, as you seek God for a fresh sense of his presence, as you seek God for those answers to prayer that you're struggling with, I believe that this generous God we worship will generously give to us all things in Christ Jesus. Will you ask God this morning? Will you meet with God this morning? Will you revisit this verse, of John 3 verse 16, and let it come alive for you again this morning? Thank you so much for listening to me. It's been so good to be with you. And I just want to finish now by praying for you. Holy Spirit, I just pray that wherever people are watching this this morning, that they will know your presence in the room with you. Will you fill that room with your presence and with your love? Will you let each and every person that views this know that they are precious in your sight? that they're made in your image. Father, thank you for Jesus. Thank you for this amazing verse. For God so loved the world that he gave all he had, his only son, that whoever believes in him would not perish, but have eternal life. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Keith, for such a great word. It's been really great having Keith with us this morning and opening our new series, Life Changing. And thank you for joining us. It's been really great to have you with us. If you want to find out more, then please do get in touch, whether that's about having faith in God or about our church. We would love to hear from you. Now, of course, if you don't want to miss out on future content, please do hit that subscribe button and uh, you'll hear more about future notifications and content that we're putting out or you can email us, but we'd love to hear from you. Summer's a great time and we're all enjoying uh, a bit of a break and a bit of time off and we pray that God is really uh, blessing you and that you're experiencing the riches of his rest and his presence during the summer time. But if you do feel like you need to get in touch, then please do so. Pray that you have an abundantly blessed week and looking forward to seeing you next week. Take care.